If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Mastermind to Think Like a Killer is a 2024 American documentary series directed and produced by Abby Fuller. It explores the career of Anne Burgess, focusing on her work at the FBI developing means of trafficking serial killers and other violent crimes based on her novel research into the behaviors. The documentary had its world premiere at the Tribeca Festival on June 7, 2024, and it premiered on July 11, 2024 on Hulu. The series explores the career of Anne Burgess, looking into her widely known and lesser known cases. The series follows Burgess and investigations at the FBI into serial killers and their victims. In April 2023, it was announced that Abby Fuller would direct and executive produce alongside Ellie and Dakota Fanning, a documentary series revolving around Anne Burgess for Hulu, with Burgess serving as a consulting producer. Just a little bit about the real Dr. Anne C. Walbert Burgess. Burgess was born on October 2nd, 1936, and she's an American researcher and psychiatric nurse clinical specialist who has worked and focused on victims of trauma and abuse, and is the author of A Killer by Design, Murderers, Mind Hunters, and My Quest to Decipher the Criminal Mind. She's a professor at the William F. Connell School of Nursing at Boston College. She received her master's degree from University of Maryland and with her doctorate from Boston University. Burgess pioneered assessing and treating trauma and rape victims. She co-founded one of the first hospital-based crisis counseling programs at Boston City Hospital with Boston College sociologist Linda Lytle Holmstrom. Together, she and Holmstrom conducted extensive research regarding the 1960s rape victims in Boston. She interviewed victims and quantified their experiences. This caught the attention of the FBI. She began to consult for Johnny Douglas, Robert Ressler and other FBI agents at the Behavioral Science Unit to develop more modern psychological profiling for serial killers. The BSU was interested in doing similar research to Burgess, except with perpetrators rather than victims. Burgess was granted access to early cassette tapes that were recorded during the first serial killer interviews, such as discussions with Edmund Kemper, Ted Bundy and Charles Manson. At first, she questioned working with the FBI as she had four young children and she knew it would take up time from her family. However, the importance of the work is what made her agree. She would say, I was feeling pressurized to make the right decision. I mean, I didn't care much about the offenders, they were killers. The biggest motivation from my perspective was helping victims. I focused on that as much as I could. Burgess first consulted on the John B. Simonis case. He was known as Louisiana's ski mask rapist and confessed to over 80 rapes nationwide across 12 states. Burgess was sent to Louisiana to interview his victims. When she first arrived alone and introduced herself as a member of the FBI, authorities called the FBI believing she was impersonating an agent due to her being a woman. As she conducted her interviews, Burgess told the woman that they were essential to the investigation, as the information could help catch the offender. She said this is what led to so many of them opening up to her as they realized authorities believed their story. Burgess realized the patterns of victims they were mainly women who lived a wealthy lifestyle. She surmised that the perpetrator would likely drive a flashy car and be in his late 20s or early 30s. The profile her team created with her work eventually led police to arresting Simonis. He was sentenced to 18 life terms and 2,406 years in prison. She also worked on the John Joubert case. After a young boy was killed in Nebraska, a member of the BSU gave a police profile for who the killer might be. The profile was incorrect and led to a wrong arrest. After a second young boy was killed, establishing that it was a serial killer, Burgess was officially brought in to the profiling room. Burgess profiled him as a white man in his early 20s with a weak build. Evidence pointed to a boy's victims trusting him, so Burgess profiled that he may be a teacher, coach, or a scout leader. Later, it was confirmed that he was assistant scout master. Burgess also noted that he may be interested in detective magazines, as that was a common pattern with similar serial killers. Joubert's belongings included a detective magazine that was dog-eared on a page about a young newspaper boy being adopted. After being found, Joubert was given the death sentence and was later executed. Burgess was then also caught to an interview in 80-year-old Opal Horton in Illinois. Horton was riding a bike with her friend, Melissa Ackerman, when a man attempted to abduct them. Horton was able to escape, but Ackerman was brought into the man's car and had not been found. It was imperative that they got as much information from Horton as possible. During the interview, Burgess asked Horton to make drawings of the incident, hoping it would make it easier for the child to communicate. The child drew the crime scene and what she was feeling during the time. Police used Horton's description and the sketch of the car that was used during the abduction to arrest Dungan. By the time Burgess was called to review the Menendez brothers' case, she had mainly stepped away from her career. She was asked to serve as an expert witness by the defense team. The prosecution claimed the brothers killed their parents for money. Burgess did not think this motive made sense, so she flew out to California to meet with them. According to Burgess, the first time she was in the room with the killer was the first time she met with Eric Menendez. 
she spent around 50 hours interviewing him. As she had done earlier with Opal Horton, Burgess asked Eric to draw the crime. She believed this would make it easier for Eric to discuss, as it did not require him to look at her directly. Burgess says Eric drew his father as a large and controlling man. According to Burgess, many of the sketches Eric drew of him and his father took place in the bedroom, which she thought was an unusual place. She asked for further information about his father in the bedroom, leading to Eric to draw a depiction of incestuous sexual abuse. She would say, they killed their parents, absolutely no matter what the circumstances are, that's still wrong, but they certainly were abused. I could sympathize with that, what they had to put up with, so I decided to testify for the defense. Her former colleague, Johnny Douglas, directly told her she was making the wrong choice. However, she felt compelled by the motive, saying, to me it was important in terms of getting the truth out about trauma and abuse. The first trial resulted in a hung jury. During the second trial, Burgess was not allowed to testify because the judge did not allow any expert witnesses who were experts on abuse. After seeing her impact on the jury during the first trial, Burgess realized the way she could help victims was by stepping more into the spotlight and by lending her testimony to trials. Burgess was then tasked with interviewing Andrea Constant as she began a civil lawsuit against Bill Cosby back in 2005. Constant reported that she had been drugged by Cosby and was unconscious when she was assaulted. Besides asking her about the actual event, Burgess asked her about her demeanor before and after the incident. According to Burgess, even if someone was unconscious for most or all of a sexual assault, the body still recounts the trauma and reacts appropriately. The case was settled, but Constant was able to face Cosby again in a criminal case during the Me Too movement as more women came out with similar stories. Burgess has been attributed to the inspiration for the character of Dr. Wendy Carr, a psychological consultant for the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit in Netflix's TV series Mindhunter. Several liberties were taken with the character of Dr. Carr. In an interview with Newsweek, she commented on Carr's character, stating that she emulated several aspects of Burgess's life correctly, aside from Carr's career in psychology as opposed to Burgess's in nursing. When she was asked why her profession was changed, Burgess said, I think they felt they had to give Wendy Carr an occupational profession that people would understand, and they didn't understand nursing. Burgess also said that though Carr's character identifies as a lesbian, Burgess does not. Burgess has four children and also has experience with aviation and flying planes. Now, Mastermind to Think Like a Killer is a gripping yet fleeting dive into the wonderful and fascinating career of Dr. Anne Burgess. This documentary series offers an insightful and fascinating exploration of one woman's fantastic and interesting career and how she, along with others, namely Robert Ressler and Johnny Douglas, literally changed the way we study criminal minds and go about apprehending and even in some cases preventing some of society's most dangerous people from destroying those around them. Dr. Burgess's expertise shines through in this documentary series, which offers an insightful and fascinating exploration of the criminal mind from her perspective. Her groundbreaking techniques and use of analysis helped us understand these most complicated of people and in some cases was even able to apprehend the perpetrator involved. My one gripe of the series is it falls short in its brevity, leaving the viewer craving more in-depth information and a more comprehensive examination of the subject matter. With more development and detail, Mastermind could have reached the full potential of this fantastic and fascinating subject. For me, this series is a sort of brief overview on this woman's fantastic career. Dr. Anne Burgess deserves to be lauded and held in high acclaim. And what the series does do is it highlights her fantastic work, particularly as a woman in an all-male dominated field. How she thought out the box with groundbreaking techniques for the time. Also fighting and going against the trend and getting men to listen to her. And she did this all in the pursuit of helping and saving lives. She is a complete and utter hero and deserves all the recognition that this series will hopefully provide her. Despite being concise in nature, the series remains a captivating watch, thanks to Burgess's expertise and the intriguing subject matter. Look, for those interested in true crime and psychology, this documentary series is well worthwhile. Albeit brief, it is a fascinating insight into one woman's courageous work to not only understand the criminal mind, but to save and help victims. Mastermind, to think like a killer, gets an 8.5 out of 10.